Everybody needs a compressor, at least that's how we all feel. We should have a compressor, and I feel the same way. I want a compressor for my shop. So, I went down to a local store and I paid $899 for a 60 gallon tank, five horsepower Ingersoll Rand compressor right before Christmas. Now, after Christmas, I went back to the same store only to find that, that compressor was not available. So, what do I do? Well, like any good American, I went on to argue with the guy that runs the store, and we agreed that I would get the $1,299 compressor, which is an 80 gallon tank, five horse, for $8.99. It's complete overkill. I don't need this compressor. But we're gonna talk about compressors today because I think this is a really important topic for a lot of people, not just us car guys, but for car guys especially because we do like our compressors. Let's go talk about it with Cam. How convenient you are. Yes. <laughs> it's magic. It's magic. You just live here and I don't know it. Pop. <laughs> You're like a genie. <laughs> All right, so we have an 80 gallon, five yep. horsepower, 15.8 CFM compressor that we probably don't need. Yeah, it's a little bit overkill for what we got. We got a, such a good price on it though. I mean, that's yeah. a that's a $1,300 compressor that I got for basically... <laughs> when we were first looking at them, we were like 1,100,000. Yeah, they've, <laughs> they've gone, gone, up. gone up. And that other one too, for <laughs> yeah. a long time, it was it was up at a thousand bucks. And then right before the holidays, they dropped the price on it to 899 and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, pull jump the trigger. On, jump on it while you can. Yeah, yeah, and I jumped on it, went over there and got it, and the rest is history with what happened because you and I went back and forth on do we really need the 80 and I'm like agreed with you we really need the 60 because a it's smaller and lighter mm -hmm. it'll fit in that building better there are a lot of pluses to that 60 because all right so is there anything that we can talk about on capacity as far as tank size because I mean we have an 80 gallon tank yeah it's definitely overkill for what we're doing um, your tank size is really dependent on what tools you own Okay. And what you're going to be doing with the compressor. Right. Um, your standard like 3 8 air impact, half inch air impact, uh, air ratchets, blow gun, all that type stuff. 30 gallon, even a pancake compressor can run those. Yes. Um, it won't enjoy it, but it'll do it just fine. Yeah. Um, but once you start. Because that's what we've been doing around here. Yeah. We've Pan been using that little, uh, we've got a little Craftsman. we got a Craftsman two horse. Little it's pancake. A little pancake. Yeah, it's go like small. Two and a half gallons. Something two and a half like gallons. Yeah. Like. It's either two fours or two. I've got gallon. a twenty-one gallon Harbor Freight in my house that has not enjoyed its life, but, <laughs> but it does the job just fine. <laughs> it's paying for something someone does. Yeah. <laughs> but so the more big air tools you have and the more high demand tools, you want to get above thirty gallons. Um, for like what we do with blast cabinets. Uh, Bead blasters are horrible. They're, they're they, hogs. Yes, they eat as much air as you will give them. And the more air you give them, the better results you get. Yes. So the bigger, the better. Um, that ties into CFM a little bit as well because you can keep working pressure up. Yes. Hey, details. But it, well, I mean, I think that's back and forth, but the more capacity you yeah. have. Uh, if you have bead blast cabinets, I would recommend 60 gallon right away. Yeah. If you even want to consider getting a bead blast cabinet in your lifetime, Go ahead get a 60 rate. gallon. Don't waste with a 30 gallon to begin with. You're just going to throw away $500 that you might be able to tote around later and use elsewhere. But well, and that's the other thing too is, is this kind of one of those things where you're talking about like a Holly carburetor back in the day, bigger was always better. Yeah. Uh, it's really not that way. Yeah, it is bigger is nice because it's less that the compressor has to run, but it's also longer that the compressor has to run to recharge. So your apples, oranges. Yeah. But for small, small, Home shops, I would say 60. If you want to get into a commercial shop or doing like paint booth. Full. Which we're looking, not a paint booth here, but we're looking at getting one yeah. of those um, inflatable paint, paint booths. Because yeah. right now, my biggest problem isn't paint because we can get paints for the cars. It's That's finding not an issue. To do the paint. It's finding somebody to actually do the paint. And we know a couple of guys that are mobile paint guys. Yeah. Who have said, yeah, man, if you yeah, got if a place we, have a we do form, it, they'll do it for you. They can yeah, do it here. Yeah. So I mean, that's probably what we're going to end up doing. So that's something that's going to be coming down the road. Yeah, and you can paint a car with a thirty-gallon air compressor. You'll be there for days. <laughs> You'll get. Well, you're talking about high volume. Yeah. Low pressure, because that's what almost every you can't yeah. hardly find a non-HVLP gun now. Yeah. Uh, so, most states are requiring HVLP to be sold. If you have one, there's probably a little helicopter that's going to come out of the air with a bunch of guys <laughs> with black suits on. <laughs> 
to take things away the from you and put you in a car. version of the ATF. <laughs> 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 like that thing with the the mean that's running around. It's just, it's just, is that gun legal? Are those level four plates? <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't even know if air is as big a deal as it as it once was. It really isn't. Uh, even just in the time that I was in the shops, he, I went. I switched to battery power almost exclusively. It's just a lot more convenient for a yeah. lot of things. Uh, I still think that there is a place for air in a shop like with what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in restoration stuff because you're running, you know, you're probably going to run a bead blast cabinet mm -hmm. because Harbor Freight has a really good bead blast cabinet. It's a fairly yep. reasonable price. You know, bead blast so. is always nice for small parts, needle scaler for knocking rust off of frame rails, everything like that. And you cannot beat the power of a half inch air impactor. No. The battery power is good, but nothing breaks bolts faster. <laughs> <laughs> really, really not our goal. But yeah, yeah I get yeah, where you're going yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so if we're going to do this, if we're looking at compressors, what really should a guy be shopping for? When he's going to go out and go buy a compressor, we researched it pretty well, and we mm -hmm. ended up on the Ingersoll Rand, but what should he be looking for? So really, you want to match capacity to what you're doing. Um, if you're running a shop like this, uh, B blast cabinets, DA sanders, um, anything that you're going to be sitting there using air for a while, you would like the most capacity that you can get. CFM isn't really big when you get up into big capacity tanks because right. you have 60 gallons of capacity. The CFM is really how fast can it recharge and if it needs to recharge or if you're continuously using a tool, can it hold the pressure while you're using that tool. 15.8 should be adequate to everything we're going to be doing here. Yeah, you. Uh, I think a one-inch air impact normally uses like 20 CFM at 90 right. PSI, so we're not running anything that big here. Right. Most we're going to run is a DA, a beat blast cabinet, or a maybe a three-quarter inch. And our thing is we have a lot of air tools. We have a little yeah. air saw that we use. We love that air saw. Yeah. There's been a ton of times doing the body work on these things that we've played Missed with that air saw. And just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's out here now. Yeah. It's really shown how much I do miss having that air saw yeah. around. And stuff like uh, little uh, quarter inch wide belt sanders, or not yes. quarter inch, those the things. Small belt sanders. For are knocking awesome. out uh, spot welds and stuff like that in yes. tight areas. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that, that's good. So you're looking for something that's going to be, what would you say? Okay, if we were going from bone scratch, mm -hmm. have nothing here already, would you still have gone with a 60 gallon? Yeah. If you can afford a 60 gallon for a shop, I'd want a 60 gallon. Now, another thing that we looked at too was the Eastwood scroll compressor. Mm -hmm. Those ones are good. Um, scroll compressors in general are really nice because they have a huge CFM rating most times. Yeah. Uh, so it's almost continuous duty and you really don't need a tank because they yeah. they make that much air. Um, so you can run at full blast with no tank and have full 90 PSI in your line still. Wow, yeah. The thing I, I don't like about it from our perspective, and it's really the only reason we didn't actually go with the, something from Eastwood, was the fact that we wanted, we were looking at having it in the shop, yeah. and it's, it's very quiet yeah. compared it's to the other. extremely quiet. But it still makes noise. Yeah. And so it would be something that it's distracting enough when we're MIG welding and we've got the MIG welder whining away in there and yeah. all this other stuff going on, not to have a compressor going off in the background if we're running yeah. air while it's, we're running It's the not other deafening side. or anything like that, but for camera work, yeah, it, it's too loud. It's too loud. But for a normal shop, I like the fact that there's a roll around. Yeah. You, you, if you're used to a normal compressor and you switch to a scroll, you won't even hear it. Yeah. It's that. It's the equivalent of like a 220 window unit. Yeah, exactly. It's fairly quiet. Yeah, yeah, it's very quiet. But the problem you run into with that one is, is they are a little more expensive because it's a different yes. style and it's a more expensive style to construct. Yes. So it's a more expensive style of compressor. It's a bit more sensitive too. Yeah. Um, you need clean air, dry air, and you want to have filters set up and desiccant charges and all right. that stuff. Yes. So from that perspective, I think a scroll was one of the things we were definitely looking at. It was, it was on the list to do. But we ended up with what we did just simply because we did a few, looked at a couple of reviews out there on the market and the reviews were like, you know, it is quieter. There were decibel lines and everything where mm -hmm. they did all that stuff. And I'm like, that's quiet, but it's still more noisy. And it's just one more thing in a 30 by 36 building. And I didn't want to yeah. have that. So we went with a less expensive option that we could put further away. Yeah. Noisier, further away. 
It's the neighbor's problem. It's the neighbor's problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually going to insulate the building. Yeah. We got a few little things that we're going to do. We're going to talk about some of that stuff here in a second. So basically what you're really looking for is the most CFM that you can get with a decent horsepower rating so that you're not constantly running that little two horsepower, yeah. three horsepower. Yeah, the horsepower on it's not really um, a big thing compared to like CFM and stuff. Uh, that mostly affects how hard your motor is going to have to work and then how much amperage you're going to be drawing. So that's the major thing. And it's just going to be its power usage. Yeah. And we're going to go into that in just a second. Um, so we've kind of gone through that, and I think what I wanted to talk about now is what we're planning on doing with this one because we have a five horsepower motor. It's an 80 gallon tank, and if you have any small leaks in your line system, um, and you're like me and you leave the compressor on at night, like I do sometimes, mm -hmm. it can start costing you some serious amount of money, and if you have neighbors close by, possibly friendship with your neighbors. Um, so what I'm going to do with this one is I've got a timer uh, that I'm going to get from Amazon that is uh, a timer that will shut the compressor off after a certain time in the evening. I'm going to probably set it to 6 o'clock every day. It's where it can run during the day if it needs to, to, to air up if I need to come out here and work in the shop. But then at night it's completely shut down. It will start up again at 10 o'clock in the morning because I cannot seem to get out here until 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so we're gonna run a timer on it, and then we're also going to, in that very small confined space that we have the compressor in right now, we're going to buy a, um, a roof vent that you can buy. That's a fan vent for evacuating hot air out of an attic. It has a temperature set up on it, and it runs 110. Just to keep air circulating. Just to keep air circulating in and out of there. And we're also gonna move our um, air intake to the outside of the building. So it's pulling fresh, colder air or cooler air from outside. Summertime in the south, I'm not sure what that actually <laughs> means because it's going to be wet, yeah. hot air. Uh, it's going to be pulling the air from the outside rather than the air from inside that building. So there's a couple of little changes we're going to be making down the road in order to facilitate our Just better performance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, we're going we're gonna to hot rod it. <laughs> Basically, we were talking about putting the Galaxy air filter. And we stuff were thinking about yeah, putting the air, the Galaxy cool. air cleaner on there and, and kind of back. Be kind of cool just it. to get a Chrome 14 inch. Or I something. thought about yeah. that, but I don't have a way to put it up to where you won't get it wet if it's mm -hmm. raining. So, um, but that was that kind of stuff. Now, what I wanted to talk a little bit about is you had a setup that we use. I'm gonna have a little drawing that I'm gonna put up here right now. This is our. Uh, bleed system that we're using to bleed off any water in the lines. Uh, and what we've done is we bought ball valves that are of a similar size to the line we're running so that we can just pop that and get any water out of the yeah. system as quickly as we possibly can. We're going to have four points on our system for water evacuation. We're going to have one up there by the compressor. There's one right at the entry point of the lines into the building. So when they come into the building, they go into the system I'm showing you, drop down to the bottom edge of the building, and then we evacuate out over there. And then we have another one that's on the other end of it. And there's one other one that I was thinking about, and I don't remember where we were going to put it. Um, but we at least have three on here, and you want to have that. You want to have one at the beginning point uh, by the compressor. You want to have one, if you're running a long line system like we are underground, you're going to want one by the entry point to your structure, and then you're going to have one at the very end of your line setup because we have a perimeter system all the way around the back side of this building that goes into the far corner over there uh, that is has a drain on it as well. Another thing that we did with the drain system on this is we actually took the lines and we started off higher over by the entry point at the drain and as we go around the building, like you do with gutters, we ran on a slow downward decline around the building to the final point with a drain at the end of it. That way, when you're not running the air in the system, if there is water that is suspended and it sits there for a little while and condensates and then drops into the bottom of the line, it'll drop down to the drains. Yeah, it should find one drain at least. Yeah. Drain your compressor in the south every hour. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was, it was summertime, <laughs> if you're using once it every a week, day, uh, uh, once a day. The one that we had at Kenworth and Flint, I'd drain that every night, and it probably put about a gallon and a half out. Yeah, just in one day. Because y'all are running there all day yeah, long, and yeah. that compressor probably running the entire time. Yeah, and the whole time it's just sitting there, it's condensating. The so. more you're running the compressor, the more you're going to want to check your your drain on the bottom of the compressor tank. Uh, put a pan underneath there, just a little dog dish pan that you can catch the water in. It looks like it's getting full. 
pull the pan out and go yeah. throw it out. Or another really nice thing is to go to a truck shop and get a uh, bleed valve or a drain valve from a truck air tank. Yes. Because they have just cords. You don't have to reach under there and unscrew it. Right. So you just pull the rip cord and it drains, then seals again. I was thinking about doing something where you just drain it straight out underneath the building. Yeah, that's another good thing is to put a hole in the floor. <laughs> put a hose or something down mm -hmm. so that it's not spraying on the floor. I think we'll probably end up doing with that one, but the way they've got the drain set up on it, it's actually a very small finger yep. turn at the very bottom of it, which is going to be messy trying to yep. open that up. So we may change that out and, and do something different with that. Other than that, I love that compressor. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that you recommended that we did was to go to a very big line size and a very big fitting size. Yep. So explain that a little bit. For as far away as that tank is, you're going to lose a lot of your working pressure uh, coming from the line because just the longer the line is, the more CFM you lose in it. It's the same thing as like, I would say like long intake runners and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, just the velocity changes in the line and you lose just a lot of the pressure by the end of the line. Right, right. Um, and if we have an issue with that, honestly in here, I would recommend maybe getting like a 30 gallon we find a compressor that's on like Craigslist that doesn't work anymore. Out there. Yeah. And just run it into the line set so that you have 30. Because we're going to do that out here on yeah. um, by Studio A. Yeah. Because we have air in here and we also have air over in Studio A. So we've got a long line run of air. So we're going to take that smaller tank that we have, place it out by the back of the building over here at a safe location because it is an older tank yeah. and use that as our pig. Yeah, and it's just basically like a battery or an accumulator yeah. in the system. So you'll have 30 pounds of, or 30 gallons of 120 PSI air right. there. So it'll pull pressure from that and just recharge from the main tank. Right. Always like calling them air pigs. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> I just think that's cool sounding. But we ran, so we ran the bigger lines. We ran three quarter, I think. Yeah. And we went, now this is going to be a point where we're probably going to get some some poo poo in. We went with PEX. Yeah. And we went with the shark bite, se shark bite seals that they sell, which are a complete ring seal on the PEX. Uh, we went with the shark bite system on it so that it's got a really good tight yeah. perimeter seal. 210 burst pressure rating on PEX. So it should hold the pressure. We're not gonna get hot, so we don't have to worry about expansion on that. Um, there's no real like writing that it works for airline, but it holds water. Um, it's got we're, 200 PSI burst. <laughs> we're going to find we're gonna, out. We're going to do that metric. Yeah. Yeah. The F around and find out <laughs> yeah. metric. Yeah. Come up here and go over there. <laughs> and you'll find out. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing with it. So the fittings that you recommended that we get, and I got, are the ones with the 3 eighths opening rather than the quarter. Yeah, the biggest, you want the most flow in every line that you can, so you have the most flow to your tool. Yeah, every, every downsize in a pipe lessens your working ability at the end of the line. But it is worth it at the end of the day. It is, absolutely. And we We're, did, we actually did uh, mobile couplers as well. Yep. Uh, just to make it a little easier for running the air around the room so you don't have any risk of possibly... And you're you not know, putting pressure on the line in the wall. Exactly. Yeah. So um, we did that. Um, and nice thing about the PEX as well, everything's available at Home Depot. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You can go down to Home Depot and you can get all of it. You can yeah. get the, the shark bite. The tool, I recommend getting the tool. The yes. one I'm showing you right now is the is the application tool. So I do like PEX for a lot of different applications and an air application. We'll see. In theory, it's a good choice. <laughs> and if it doesn't, we'll see it's, yeah. if it's better than the kit that you buy down at, uh, if we have to buy the stuff at Northern Tool, I'm going to have to take out a loan. Yeah. That the, stuff's the, not cheap. I think the one kit for like 50 foot or 100 foot was more expensive than everything. Everything we bought. Yeah. Because I bought the roll yeah. to you, do the stuff yeah. down to the building and down to that building. Yeah, you just buy a 100-foot spool of it. I think 100-foot spool is like 30, 50 Yeah, bucks. and then I bought some straights to do the stuff in here because yeah. nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to take a roll of pecs and straighten it out, I'm telling you. <laughs> Only once. Yeah, I did it once. <laughs> Ain't doing it again. I started going with straights after that. It was just too much work. Yeah. All right, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is reviews. Um, <laughs> what happened? What got me on this subject is the other day, the twins came to me and they brought me something and they said, look at this, it's got five star review. Mm -hmm. And I said, right, but like 25 people have yeah. reviewed it. Yeah, if there's, honestly, if there's less than like 100 reviews on something, I'm not believing half of them anyway. 
Especially, it's you know, I, I look at it and I'm like, I don't know because you can get 25 people from your company to write in yeah. from fake emails to, to or say you can I give somebody a 25 discount, 25 percent discount, and review they, this on Yahoo for me. And so I mean, I'm like, if it's got a lot of good reviews, and that was the other reason we went with the Ingersoll Rand when we started looking down from uh, the scroll compressors was that. That Ingersoll Rand has really good reviews. I mean, it's got you know. And four Ingersoll and a half, four in general stars. is like that's their top, bailiwick. It was top tier for air compressors in America. Mm -hmm. Quincy's really good. Um, they're fully American made. Uh, there's a few others. I mean, Harbor Freight is decent. And the Bel Air is another one that's got a yeah. pretty good reputation. Yeah, there's a few in America that are really good brands, but I mean, they all do the same thing. I mean, my point on it was for eight ninety nine. Looking at the sixty gallon version that we were looking at, mm -hmm. bang for the buck, yeah. the Ingersoll had everybody. It, I was liking it, yeah. and I'm, I don't get a dime out of this from Ingersoll. I'm not making any money on this. I lost money on this because I had to go buy a compressor. Um, I just liked the fact we went through and we sifted all this stuff down, looked at all the different local stores because I don't want to order a compressor online and then pay the truck shape truck freight shipping to get it here. Only to find out that it got dropped off the pallet five times. Yeah, on the way here. drop kicked into the truck. <laughs> and then pushed out the back at yeah. speed. So I just decided we wanted to be able to go and take a look at it and eyeball it before we bought it, which is what we did. It yeah. didn't seem to matter because yeah. we ended up with a different compressor, but. Yeah. It really, for name brand, it's really, for me it boils down to what's the warranty on parts? Yeah. Um, what compre what warranty is on the compressor, the motor? and just the general build quality. If you go up to one and you can see the welds on the top of the tank are porous, don't Probably buy it. Run. Yeah, yeah, don't buy it. Way. 80, well, the pressure level in there with bursting yeah. would be ugly. Yeah, There 80, would be 80, no brown building. Yeah, 80, <laughs> 80 gallons of 120 PSI air will do a lot of damage it in that little thing. will do a lot of damage. Um, well, I mean, I guess that's really it. That's really kind of all I wanted to go into today was just really talking about compressors because it was the last thing we really hadn't done to the studio space and studio A over here. So we wanted to do a video today on that to kind of clear that out and get that out there for people to take a look at because I think it is probably shop wise outside of going into something like MIG welders, e lifts, lifts that, and things like that. An air compressor is one of the largest. And if you guys want to see us do a video on MIG welders and what we think we sh you should do with MIG welders, um, we've got some relationships out there in the industry that we can talk to, some guys that work locally at a lot of the body shops to know what they're working with. We can do a video on what we think you should get into for welding up product. I will say this about that kind of stuff. It's a lot of times... User preference. It's user preference. Yeah. Some people are diehard Miller. Some are diehard Lincoln just because of the colors of them and the name of the brand. Yep. That's it. Yeah, that's really it. Because a lot of times I've, I've run Miller, I've run Lincoln. The latest Lincoln we've got, I'm not crazy about it. Mm -hmm. I've got a Harbor Freight that I love. But yet that one that Bill's got? Yeah, oh. his Lincoln is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I've run Bobcat um, on truck, on demand welders mm -hmm. for stick welding, Lincoln 500 amps. They're We've even heard really good reports about the Harbor Freight Titan series that they have. Yeah, that's the one I have as a Titan. Yeah, you got the Titan. So, I mean, yeah. we've, we've, boy, if you guys are interested in seeing something like, let us know in the comments below. Tell us what you think about what we're doing with our compressor stuff. If you do not agree, if you do not agree with the pecs, tell me. It's not going to change my mind because it's in the wall it's already. It's not coming out until it's, it's got to. <laughs> even that was then. one thing we did do that we didn't talk about, and that mm -hmm. is the walls in here. All the walls in here can be taken apart. They're all screwed together. There's only a couple places where we have uh, drywall mud, and it's places where there's no pecs going through it. So we do have that set up. So that is something that I wanted to mention. I forgot mm -hmm. to mention that before, so remember that. Um, so Patreon, help us out. You're helping the kids out, but also if we've done anything to save you any money, put that money that you saved <laughs> in your pocket. It's the best way I can put it. I mean, really is what we're doing is you're helping the kids out here because we buy them food, we pay them a little bit of money to come in here and work with us on the Saturdays, but it's also a learning experience for the kids. We are teaching young people how to operate cameras and some of these guys are coming in to learn how to work. Heck, he started off here mm -hmm. with that, so please check that out. I'm also gonna talk about subscriptions. Subscribe to the channel. We're at 98.9 now. We're getting danger close, probably first part of February. I'd love to have that happen by Deanna's birthday. Mm -hmm. So if we can arrange for this to happen by February 18th, 19th, somewhere in there, ish. If you give her the plaque, can you not buy her again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's our goal. <laughs> give Deanna the plaque for her birthday. <laughs>
I'll take everything else back. <laughs> Here's your black. <laughs> Gotta re refund some of that compressor money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all be kind to each other. Love on each other. Treat each other nice. You have a great week. We'll see you next time on Auto oh, Rest of Mine. <laughs> Here's your black. <laughs> I'm going to need that back in about 30 minutes, though. <laughs> if you want to look at it, you can yeah, go to the yeah, shop. You come up to the shop. Look at them all. <laughs> You're a bad man. <laughs> i got to get back on this thing now. All right.